Clifford Chatterton. He has continued to work for the needs of veterans and their families as Chief Executive Officer of the War Amputations of Canada and has extended his work to people living with other disabilities. His energetic fundraising initiatives have helped to build a support network for child amputees. His name has become synonymous with lifelong dedication of service to others. This is a promotion within the order. Chatterton grew up in Winnipeg in the 1930s during the Great Depression. This background helped forge a strong work ethic and resolve that would serve him well in life. I was very interested in sports. I was interested in history. I was interested in military things because my father had been wounded in World War I. I would say also that I really grew up B believing in Canada. When I was in high school, I got interested in debating. Some people say I've never lost that interest, but <laughs> I remember when Time magazine came into our house, that was mine. I read it from cover to cover. My dad said, you have to make sure that you get your education and you're heading for university no matter what. And I had that drummed into me when I was 10 years old. At the age of 19, Cliff was working as a news editor for Canadian Press, a reporter for the Winnipeg Free Press, and taking courses at the University of Manitoba. His passion was hockey. He played for the Winnipeg Falcon Rangers, the farm team for the New York Rangers. There was talk of Cliff being brought up to play for New York the following season. On September 10th, 1939, everything changed. I look over at the teleprinter and flash, war declared. I just said, hey, uh, if there's going to be a war, I'm going to be in it. Not out of any heroism, but uh, because I'd come from a military family. My father had served in World War I. I'd kind of been brought up on war stories. I wasn't looking for glory, but it was just, a, I suppose, an adventure or something I wouldn't want to miss. One month later, he enlisted with the Royal Winnipeg Rifles. So then the colonel called me in and said, uh, we want you to join the regiment as an officer. And I said, no. He said, what? I said, no, thanks. I said, I'll, I'll join all right, but uh, this war is going to be over by Christmas. And uh, besides, I, what qualification do I have to, to lead men? I found out a little bit later that um, probably I did. Cliff quickly rose through the ranks to become a company commander. He landed on Juneau Beach as part of the D-Day invasion and led his troops through fierce battles in Normandy and Belgium. During the Battle for the Scheldt in October 1944, Cliff lost his leg in a grenade attack. While convalescing in the Army Field Hospital, he had an epiphany that would define how he approached the rest of his life. I divided into my, uh, my body into parts. I don't need my legs, really. I need my head, and the head was OK. So with the head, I could go out and challenge the world and find something to do that would be useful. When Cliff came back to Canada, the war amps from World War I were there to assist him in rebuilding his life as an amputee. He liked the organization and all it stood for and became an active member. Returning to the workforce, he devoted his efforts to helping veterans readjust to civilian life. He held several positions, including advisor to the Minister of Labour and Veterans Rehabilitation, National Secretary of the Army Benevolent Fund, and the Director of the Canadian Army Financial Welfare Program. Cliff played an instrumental role in developing programs for veterans to receive job training, employment, and business loans. It sounds corny, but I sort of made up my mind that if there's anything I could do in my life to help them, because I knew what they had been through, uh, I was really going to do it. In 1965, as executive director of the Woods Committee, 
Cliff was one of the authors of an extensive study of veterans' pension legislation in Canada. The Woods Report was highly acclaimed and remains a very influential document to this day. Cliff's mentor was Padre Sidney Lambert, a World War I amputee and founder of the War Amps. Shaped by the philosophy that with courage and determination, amputees could succeed in life, Padre Lambert led the War Amps as Dominion President for 45 years. Cliff followed in his footsteps and became Chief Executive Officer of the War Amps in 1965. Under Cliff's leadership, the War Amps grew dramatically. One of his many accomplishments was to modernize the key tag service. Here at the War Amps, we return thousands of keys. I would have to say, uh, as Chief Executive Officer, that it's uh, been great fun to uh, stay on what I call the leading edge, uh, to see it develop from a manual mail-out operation to where we use uh, all of the modern technology. With the key tag service operating successfully and raising funds for its programs, the War Amps transitioned from a solely veteran-oriented association to a charitable organization representing all amputees, particularly child amputees. When we came back from World War II, everything was there for us. We had a limb service to provide limbs, and we had a strong organization to fight our battles. We said to ourselves, what happens now when a youngster loses a leg? Who is going to speak for these kids? So we started CHAMP. In 1975, the CHAMP program for child amputees was established based on the War Amps tradition of amputees helping amputees and its motto, it's what's left that counts. The only program of its kind in the world, CHAMP provides child amputees with financial assistance for artificial limbs, counseling, seminars, and peer support. Many innovative programs followed to ease the path for child amputees and their families, like Play Safe, Matching Mothers, and Jump Start. See? Yeah, we got it! I got that one! You got it! Before. Always one to lead by example, Cliff learned to downhill ski at the age of 66 because he wanted to encourage amputees, both young and old, to participate in recreational activities. In the film he produced, called The Nakiska Kids, he inspired champs to become part of the winner's circle by finding their own way to enjoy sports. Tom is so proud of his achievement, he challenges Cliff Chatterton to a race. Inspired by his visits to military cemeteries around the world, Cliff embarked on a project called Never Again and produced more than 30 documentaries to teach younger generations about the true horrors of war. He involved members of CHAMP to carry on the message and to preserve Canada's military heritage through Operation Legacy. It was our war, it is their legacy. Through the years, Cliff continued to defend the rights of amputees and veterans. He made headline news by establishing a task force to address the needs of thalidomide victims. After extensive negotiations with the government, this initiative resulted in compensation for these seriously disabled Canadians. Cliff Chatterton is hoping that with a strong moral argument, he'll be able to shame the government into doing what it should have done years ago. What this is all about is to go right back to square one and say, why? Because the government did not investigate the drug, they put it out as a safe drug, therefore the government has to bear some responsibility. As patron of the Hong Kong Veterans Association, Cliff also saw justice served for Canada's Hong Kong veterans. They had been held as prisoners of war by Japan during World War II and forced into slave labor. I've got this report on the uh, Hong Kong veterans claim. If you could see how some of them have carried the scars of this in human treatment for something like 40 years, you know that there's no way that we will ever drop this claim. For 10 years, Cliff led the fight for compensation on their behalf, 
making presentations to the United Nations and Parliament before the Canadian government finally settled the claim. Now I know why we fought the war! Now I know why we were here! Oh yeah! Cliff Chatterton was a popular choice to lead the Canadian parade through Appledorn. Glad to be back! 55 years ago, he lost a leg liberating this town from the Germans. He got a hero's welcome. My heart is going so fast, I think I better call for a doctor. Cliff often said that what gave him his inspiration to come into work every day were the champs. Of all the prestigious awards he earned, the one that meant the most to him was the Bloorview Kids Rehab Circle of Honor Award. It recognizes exceptional contribution to creating a better world for children with disabilities. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing because I would be afraid that when they dealt the card next time, I wouldn't get all the good cards. I'd get a bunch of twos or something. <laughs> play with the cards you've got and you make the best you can and somewhere in that deck was a, a work ethic that I'm happy about and um, wonderful opportunity to build something. It, it all hasn't been a picnic but I've always had a way of finding uh, where the good the good part of it was and say hold, hold on to that. I mean my god I mean, look at the opportunities I've had.